Don in London, hello. My video is all about recovery from addiction to substance and behaviour. My substance, alcohol, my behaviour, trying to be perfect and never so. Workaholic, al uh, drinkaholic, relationshipaholic, you name it. It could be substance or behaviour for me. And over the years, I guess I was influenced into my drinking, if you like, by the circumstances, family, society, civilization. And I have to say, what, does m what makes my recovery work today is family, society, and civilization. Uh, maybe I've just got a fresh pair of eyes. I reckon the reason why I have a fresh pair, pair of eyes these days is I had a moment of clarity where I realized I could not beat alcohol on my own. And what helped me most, well, the fellowship of AA, Alcoholics Anonymous. I was the most reluctant person ever to come in the doors, I thought or felt until I got there. Then I realized anybody with the malady of addiction to either substance or behavior has the same problem. How do we give up something which has been serving us well for quite a long time, sometimes making us feel convivial, sometimes making us able to feel our feelings in some strange way or, or other, or to deal with all sorts of issues like abandonment along the way. And the sad truth for me, I abandoned me along the way and uh, lost my way, lost the plot completely and needed help. So I was very lucky. Uh, my sister pushed me through the doors of AA one Sunday morning at 11 o'clock, just down the road from where I live now. And uh, I had a bit of a wake-up call and a shock. And it was such a shock I didn't go back for five years. So that's not recommended behaviour from me, not to wait five years or spend another five years out there drinking and thinking that I could do it on my own. Self will run right. And I guess I learned that, that uh, from a father who needed to be in control, to be able to say, I am right and everybody else is wrong. Made me almost similar, I guess. And these days I know I'm not right. I'm just here learning a day at a time what it's like to be sober, to be included and part of the world. So the fellowship of AA is the backbone. Uh, sobriety, if I keep my sobriety on a daily basis, then the rest of life can work. So sober, sober has to come first, so I may experience life as it is. So the Fellowship of AA Integral, and I share about how, how AA helps me with experience, strength and hope from others, and also the literature. So it's just one person's outlook. The gift of AA is full of unique, authentic people who share their experience, strength and hope as they will and where. So this is just me, just me and my outlook, based on learning from others. So. When I go to the fellowship and there is a statement of intent or the preamble shared at every meeting, it goes like this, a statement of intent. Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organization or institution, does not wish to engage in any controversy, neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. And that's just, just what it does. And you know, there's, there's two major sentences in there for me. The only requirement for member, membership is the desire to stop drinking. And that other one, our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. And we all do that in our own way. And it can be just by reaching out the hand and saying, we are here and uh, you're not alone. Um, I guess loneliness was one of those things which uh, haunted me a lot of the time. And I didn't even know I was lonely. So not too self-aware, although I was in the self-awareness business for a long, long time as a prof professional and what they say, doctor heal thyself, or physician heal thyself. I wasn't one of those, but certainly I wasn't able to heal me on my own. What I have is a self-healing fellowship, or self-healing through a fellowship, and we learn, we just keep on learning. And I use the literature of AA, and uh, books like this one, As Bill Sees It, co-founder. I like the wisdom in this, and uh, being a Sunday, and it's 20th of September 2009, Sunday morning, 9 o'clock. You know, what is, what is God? Who is God? What can it be? And for me, it's, it's become more and more 
of a, an understanding that I can never define God. God is beyond my de definition. And I guess if I were to try and define, as somebody else said, to define God is to defy God. It puts me on the same level. And that would not, well, it doesn't work. It doesn't work for me. But a, a simple understanding, which uh, help was help, I was helped by Gandhi and what he said. He said, God is truth, and others say God is love, and others say God works through people. So the collective nature of mankind, nature and providence and the universe, well, we're all connected in some way or other. And it can be on the scientific or the metaphysic level, or just simply relating to each other on a daily basis, learning from each other what's good, what works. So in As Bill Sees It Today, page 209, I don't follow the uh, uh, recommended readings from other websites, I just do it linearly as, as they turn up. So it says, never the same again. It was discovered that when one alcoholic had planted in the mind of another the true nature of his malady, that person could never be the same again. Following every spree, he would say to himself, maybe those AAs were right. After such a few, a few such experiences, often before the onset of extreme difficulties, he would return to us convinced. Well, I had to convince myself my self-will wouldn't work, even though I didn't know I was running on self-will. I just thought I had to do it on my own. Ego, I guess it could have been, probably was. Uh, but towards the end there was no ego left, there was just a fearful shell and uh, ego had disappeared as much as self-esteem had disappeared and brave facing whenever I could just didn't do me any good at all. It goes on to say, in the first years those of us who sobered up in AA had been grim and utterly hopeless cases but then we began to have success with milder alcoholics and e even some potential alcoholics. Younger folks appeared lots of people turned up who still had jobs, home, health and even good social standing. Of course it was necessary for these newcomers to hit bottom emotionally, but they did not have to hit every possible bottom in order to admit they had been licked, or they were licked. And do we have to hit bottom? Well, on an emotional level, even though this program is about emotional, spiritual and physical well-being. So I guess it just needs to be as bad as it needs to be and everybody's rock bottom is as bad as it is, let alone trying to differentiate what is utterly rock bottom and maybe halfway there. It's as bad as it gets and that's, that's where we need that connection I guess to other people getting some experience, strength and hope. And in the daily reflections today, <coughs> quite God-centred because it's asking high, higher power as a guide, September the 20th. See to it that your relationship with him is right, and great events will come to pass for you and countless others. This is the great fact for us. It comes from AA's Big Book, one, page 164. Having a right relationship with God, or in my case, God is truth, God is love, God works through people, seemed to be an impossible order, yes, because I was isolated and it was impossible for me to relate. My chaotic past had left me filled with guilt and remorse, and I wondered how this God business could work and I was always worried about God botherers. But they're not, it's just their outlook. AA told me that I must turn my will and my life over to the care of God, as I understand him. Actually, he just suggested it was a good idea, the God of my understanding, as is the God of your understanding. With nowhere else to turn, I went down on my knees and cried, God, I can't do this, please. This, please help me. And I stood out and looked at on a very wintry morning and said, I cannot do this on my own. It was then I admitted my powerless, powerlessness, uh, that when I admitted my powerlessness that a glimmer of light began to touch my soul, and then a willingness emerged to let God control my life. Well, get my choices back is good. With him as my guide, great events began to happen, and I found the beginning of sobriety. And for me, the beginning of sobriety is all about uh, informed choices based on input from other people. Uh, people who love me, the people who include me, and just being a part of. So the transition to a higher power and understanding that there is a higher power in our life has not been that difficult after many years of fighting it. So the serenity prayer to God or good conscience, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference simply just for today.